It's a summer siege of fire, and flood neighborhoods are simmering under unrelenting triple-digit heat. Sudden flash floods are turning roads into rivers, and wildfire smoke is choking the skies from coast to coast. Millions of Americans find themselves in the crosshairs of extreme weather all at once. Over the next week, every region of the continental U.S. faces a formidable threat. From life-threatening heat waves and tropical downpours to severe storm outbreaks, wildfires, and hazardous air quality. This is not just another forecast. It's a wake-up call to brace for the onslaught and take action. If you're new here, please hit subscribe and share. These updates could save lives. At this very moment, a scorching heat dome continues to sprawl across the southern and central United States, pushing temperatures and humidity to dangerous extremes. The National Weather Service warns that nearly 150 million people, almost half the country's population, are facing major or extreme heat risks as this week peaks. Under the dome of high pressure trapping hot air cities from Texas to the Carolinas are enduring heat index values that feels like temperature well into the triple digits even at night. In parts of the southeast conditions have been described as rare and long-duration extreme heat with no overnight relief and exceptionally perilous situation for anyone without air conditioning. High humidity is preventing the usual nighttime cooling, so sweltering days bleed into oppressive nights. Emergency rooms are on alert for heat illnesses, and officials urge people to check on vulnerable neighbors and limit outdoor exposure. Forecast outlook from NOAA shows overlapping hazards through early August with the pink shading over the south signaling a zone of extreme heat July 31st, AUG 1 and green areas, highlighting where excessive rainfall is expected to trigger floods, AUG 2 out of 4. The scope of this heat wave is staggering. From the desert southwest through the southern plains and up into the lower Mississippi Valley, daily high temperatures above 100 or 110 degrees will be common. Forecast models project scorching highs, topping 115 degrees Wasso in the Sonoran Desert southern Arizona and over 105 degrees Wasso across much of Texas and Oklahoma in the coming days. Dozens of cities have smashed daily records, and the heat indices have soared so high that NWS heat alerts and excessive heat warnings blanket multiple states. In the eastern U.S., a heat dome recently smothered the region and put over 80 million people at major or extreme heat risk. Now that dome is shifting its focus westward and southward, portions of North Texas and the Gulf Coast that briefly dodged the worst earlier are now sliding into the furnace with heat alerts stretching from the Mississippi Delta to the deserts of California. The emotional and physical toll is evident power grids are straining under relentless air conditioning demand and communities are setting up cooling centers for those in need. This kind of heat can be deadly. The CDC reports that heat now kills more Americans annually than any other weather hazard. A sobering statistic that underscores the urgent need to stay hydrated, stay indoors during peak heat, and never leave children or pets in hot cars. Yet a dramatic change is looming. As we head toward the weekend, atmospheric gears are shifting. A strong Canadian cold front is dipping down, promising to finally crack the heat dome's grip over the southeast. But that relief comes with a catch. And it's a wet and wild one. After baking under record heat, the south and southeast are about to face the opposite extreme torrential downpours and flooding. As the aforementioned cool front sags into the superhumid air mass over the southeast, the stage is set for explosive tropical rainfall. Essentially, the atmosphere will be wringing itself out like a soaked sponge. Beginning Friday, an abundance of tropical moisture will surge north from the Gulf colliding with that stalled front. The result, wave after wave of heavy rain and thunderstorms rolling across the Gulf Coast and southeastern states. It's a classic case of feast after famine. The ground that was desiccated and hardened by extreme heat may soon be inundated by flash flooding rains. The heaviest downpours are expected from the Florida Panhandle through southern Georgia into the Carolinas where meteorologists are sounding the flood alarms. Cities like Savannah, Charleston, and Wilmington are in the bullseye for multi-inch rainfall totals that could fall in mere hours. The NOAA Weather Prediction Center has outlined a broad level 2 slight risk for excessive rainfall on Friday and Saturday across this corridor meaning flash floods are a real possibility. By Sunday, the threat may ease slightly. Level 1 marginal risk, but localized flooding could continue wherever thunderstorms train over the same areas. Streets could rapidly turn into streams, especially in poor drainage urban areas. Residents in low-lying or flood-prone zones are urged to have an evacuation plan, avoid driving through water-covered roads, and heed any flash flood warnings. Remember, turn around, don't drown. Crucially, this impending flood scenario is directly tied to the break in the heat. Just as the heat dome that kept the southeast sweltering this week starts to break down, tropical downpours will return. In other words, the very front that brings relief from 100 degree home days will also dump tropical rains over the weekend. There is even an outside chance that this stalled frontal system could spin up some tropical characteristics near the coast, essentially a weak tropical low forming along it, but whether or not a named system forms the forecast of heavy rain remains the same. It's a soaking, not a storm surge, so the focus is on freshwater flooding. This pattern of tropical moisture converging on the southeast has been relentless in recent weeks. In fact, the southeast is still recovering from multiple summer deluges. Tropical storm Chantal made landfall in South Carolina in early July, 
and at least two other tropical disturbances have swept across the region since each bringing rounds of flooding downpours. Rivers and streams in parts of the southeast are running high, and soils are saturated in spots. That means any additional rain has nowhere to go, heightening runoff and flood risks. In a tragic reminder of how deadly these tropical rain events can be, just a few weeks ago, the remnants of Tropical Storm Barry unloaded over 20 inches of rain in central Texas, triggering catastrophic flash floods that killed over 135 people. While the coming setup in the southeast isn't expected to be that extreme, it underlines the stakes inland flooding is a serious life-threatening hazard. If you live in a flood-prone area now, is the time to prepare, not when the water is at your doorstep. Make sure you're signed up for emergency alerts and let loved ones know your plan. Meanwhile, farther north and west, the central U.S. and Midwest are dealing with their own tempestuous brew. Towering thunderheads have been erupting along the northern edge of the heat dome, feeding on the clash between cooler air to the north and steamy air to the south. This has led to nighttime mesoscale convective systems, MCS, clusters of severe thunderstorms that roar across the plains and Midwest after dark like weather freight trains. In the past few days, these storm complexes have inflicted damaging winds hail and torrential rains from the Great Plains to the Great Lakes. Forecasters have even raised the alarm for derecho-like windstorms in the northern plains. Just days ago, an outbreak of intense thunderstorms in South Dakota and Minnesota prompted a moderate risk alert with the Storm Prediction Center warning of one or more corridors of widespread significant wind damage, possibly achieving derecho criteria, including hurricane force gusts over 75 million pre-surings. That long-lived line of storms did plow eastward, flattening trees and power lines across parts of the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Iowa. Such bow echo storm systems can travel hundreds of miles, felling thousands of trees and knocking out power to tens of thousands, all in a matter of hours under the cover of night. It's a reminder that not all destructive winds come from tornadoes. Straight line winds can be just as devastating. Residents in Tornado Alley in the Midwest are urged to secure loose objects in their yards and be prepared for possible overnight warnings. Have a weather radio or smartphone alert system that will wake you up if a warning is issued. Flash flooding is another companion of these training storms. In the past 48 hours, life-threatening flash floods have struck portions of the Midwest. The NOAA Weather Prediction Center had highlighted a moderate risk of excessive rain over eastern Kansas and northwestern Missouri late last week, and indeed slow-moving thunderstorms dumped five-plus inches of rain around the Kansas City area, inundating roads and neighborhoods. From northeastern Kansas, through much of Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana saturated ground and repeated downpours have led to flooded basements and water rescues. Meteorologists are keeping a wary eye on the Ohio Valley and Mid-Atlantic next, as the same cold front sparking floods in the deep south could also energize severe storms and heavy rain as it pushes farther north and east. By late week, parts of the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast could see strong thunderstorms bubbling up along the front, some with damaging winds or localized flooding. Already on Friday, scattered severe storms are expected to rake across parts of New England and upstate New York as the heat breaks there. In summary, the central and eastern U.S. faces a volatile mix daytime heat, fueling explosive late-day storms and leftover storm boundaries, igniting new storms the next day. The atmosphere is in a kind of feedback loop, and it means little downtime for storm-battered communities. Stay alert to watches and warnings, especially in the afternoons and overnight, when these squall lines tend to charge through. We want everyone to stay safe. If you have a plan for where to shelter from high winds and have your phone alerts on loud, you're already ahead of the game. And if you find this info helpful, consider subscribing or leaving a comment with your own weather stories. We're all in this together. Out west, the problem is the polar opposite of too much rain. Extreme heat, bone-dry fuels, and gusty winds are elevating the wildfire risk. The desert southwest and parts of the Intermountain West have been baking under the same stubborn high-pressure ridge fueling the central heat wave. In states like Arizona, Nevada, and interior California, this July brought exceptional heat and very low humidity, a deadly combination that turned forests and scrublands into tinderboxes. By mid-July, Northern California ignited. Several large wildfires erupted amid a brutal heat wave in the forests north of Sacramento. Two notable blazes, the Green Fire near Shasta Lake and the Butler Fire in the Six Rivers National Forest rapidly spread burning tens of thousands of acres. NASA satellites captured striking images on July 13th showing gray-white smoke billowing southward from the burning mountains shrouding communities along the Sacramento River in unhealthy haze. In those areas, air quality sensors hit very unhealthy levels as ash fell from the sky. Firefighters on the front lines faced 100-degree heat single-digit humidity and erratic winds, conditions that one can only describe as hellish. Unfortunately, the western fire season is just getting started. Red flag warnings, which signal critical fire weather conditions, have been hoisted recently in parts of the Great Basin and Pacific Northwest. For example, late last week, dry thunderstorms and gusty winds prompted red flag warnings in Utah and western Oregon. That means lightning with little rain on top of desiccated vegetation could spark new fires faster than crews can respond. And indeed, new fire starts have popped up in the Mountain West. Smoke from fires in Oregon has begun to waft into neighboring states. 
Utah, Colorado, and Nevada are also on alert as any thunderstorm that forms could ignite fires. The Storm Prediction Center has indicated areas of critical fire weather on the high plains as well. Just a few days ago, a critical risk was issued for parts of New Mexico and West Texas due to a combination of gusty winds and low relative humidity. In those areas, even the grass in fields is tender dry and able to carry a fast-moving grass fire if a spark flies. Residents in fire-prone zones out west should avoid any outdoor burning or activities that produce sparks like welding or campfires on windy days and have an evacuation plan and go bag-ready during this peak fire season. On the drought front, the western states have a mixed picture. The southwest had a decent monsoon last year and a wet winter, but some interior regions are drying out again quickly under the summer sun. The fuel moisture, the amount of water and vegetation, is dropping to critical lows in many areas. Dead brush and grasses can ignite at the flick of a cigarette, and once fires start, hot dry winds can whip them into infernos that move with astonishing speed. We've already seen how quickly tragedy can unfold in Hawaii, an out-of-control wildfire recently devastated Lahaina in Maui, a stark reminder that extreme fire conditions can turn deadly in the blink of an eye. In the mainland, U.S. communities near forests should be in fire-ready mode. Clear the brush from around your home, know your evacuation routes, and stay tuned to local alerts. If told to evacuate, do not delay. Wildfires can cut off escape routes or overwhelm areas far faster than expected. Satellite image from NASA's Landsat 8 on July 13th shows the green fire in Northern California. Thick smoke billows southward from the flames, bright orange spots blanketing Shasta Lake and the Sacramento Valley in haze. Exceptional heat and drought set the stage for this firestorm. Finally, as if flames and heat weren't enough, Americans in many regions are also contending with a silent invisible danger in the air pollutants and smoke. Air quality has plummeted to unhealthy levels repeatedly this summer, thanks in large part to the prolific wildfire smoke pouring out of Canada and the western U.S. Since May, hundreds of Canadian wildfires, some of unprecedented size, have been continuously burning, and the smoke has ridden the jet stream directly into the U.S. heartland and east coast. We all remember the apocalyptic orange skies over New York City back in early June. Now, later in July and August, the episodes continue, albeit less dramatically. Still just days ago, hazy skies and the stench of smoke returned from the Midwest to the Mid-Atlantic, sending allergy and asthma sufferers indoors and prompting new rounds of air quality alerts in states like Minnesota, Illinois, Pennsylvania, and North Carolina. Satellite data offers a striking perspective on how far-reaching and thick this smoke has been. On May 31st, for example, a NASA sensor captured a vast swath of smoke drifting into the Dakotas from fires in Manitoba and the surface fine particulate levels spiked into the very poor maroon range, meaning the air was outright hazardous to breathe. A few days later on June 2nd, the NOAA NASA Tempo satellite instrument showed widespread thick smoke plumes swirling over the eastern U.S. with purple shading on the maps indicating extremely dense smoke aloft. People in affected areas were essentially inhaling soot from forests thousands of miles away. And the onslaught has been repeated by mid-July smoke from fires in Quebec and western Canada traversed into the Great Lakes region, turning the sky milky white in cities like Chicago and Detroit and pushing the air quality index AQI well into the unhealthy category. Even this week, periodic surges of smoke continue. It only takes a shift in wind patterns for the East Coast or Midwest to suddenly find itself under a smoky pall once again. The health implications are serious. Doctors warn that extended exposure to high PM2.5 levels to fine particles in wildfire smoke can irritate the lungs, trigger asthma attacks, and even increase risk of heart issues. When the AQI hits red or purple, everyone, not just sensitive groups, should limit strenuous outdoor activity. Unfortunately, climate change-driven megafires mean we're living through something of a smoke era. This year alone, the U.S. has seen the highest number of flash flood warnings on record and extraordinary wildfire smoke incursions, a one-two punch of climate extremes. Besides wildfire smoke, urban air quality is suffering from the extreme heat as well. Stagnant high-pressure air and strong sunshine lead to the formation of ground-level ozone, a key ingredient in smog, particularly in big cities. Metro areas from Los Angeles to Houston to New York have logged multiple ozone action days this summer where the afternoon air becomes acrid and unhealthy for children, the elderly, and anyone with respiratory issues. The heat essentially cooks pollutants from tailpipes and power plants into a toxic brew. So whether it's ozone in the cities or wildfire smoke in more rural areas, millions are breathing air that's anything but clean. NOAA GOES-16 Satellite Imagery Geocolor from late June captures a massive smoke plume, gray-brown swirls spreading across the Great Lakes and northeast U.S. from Canadian wildfires. Air quality in some areas plummeted to very poor maroon on the air quality index due to this haze. What can you do? First, stay aware of your local air quality. Apps and weather sites report the AQI in real time. If it's in the unhealthy range or worse, avoid exercising outdoors and keep windows closed. Consider using an air purifier if you have one or even wearing an N95 mask outdoors on the smokiest days. Masks aren't just for pandemics. They can filter out smoke particles too. Many communities open clean air shelters on bad smoke days, similar to cooling centers, 
So take advantage if you don't have AC or air filtration at home. And importantly, reduce additional pollution on high AQI days. Try not to drive, use public transit, or carpool refuel your car in the evening when it's cooler and avoid using gas-powered lawn equipment as these all contribute to ozone formation. Across the United States, this first week of August 2025 will test our resilience. From blistering heat in the southwest and plains to tropical flood rains in the south to violent storms in the heartland to fires and smoke in the west and beyond, we are truly under siege by nature's extremes. Get information is power. By knowing what's coming, we can prepare and protect ourselves and our communities. Please take these warnings seriously. Check on each other. Follow evacuation orders if they come. None of these threats are isolated. They are all pieces of the bigger picture of a changing climate and a summer of extremes. Stay safe out there, everyone. If you found this update helpful, don't forget to subscribe for continuous coverage and share it with friends and family in affected areas. Together, we can weather this onslaught of extreme weather and come out the other side. Let us know in the comments what you're experiencing in your area or if you have questions. This channel is here to keep you informed and prepared. Stay alert, stay prepared, and as always, we'll keep you updated with the very latest.